Who's ready? Oh, my eyes are watered. Night and do around some people, living their life in bottles. Claim that he had the golden flash, back to the day in Chicago. Some people like the way it feels, some people want to kill their sorrows. No, because all you see is my hand. It's kind of creepy. So I've been surfing through a lot of videos on YouTube to uh, to see what other people's experience has been getting into nursing school. So I wanted to give a little bit of insight on my path, how I went from being in the military, through community college, and then ultimately ending up at UCLA Nursing School. So a little bit about me. I spent six and a half years in the military. I was initially stationed at Fort Bliss, Texas and El Paso. I deployed from 2009 to 2010 to Kirkuk, Iraq. I was a combat medic out at FOB Warrior. I did a lot of training. My primary mission was educating the Iraqi nationals, Iraqi police and Iraqi military on medical interventions. So a lot of my time was spent outside of the base working with the police, working with the Iraqi military one-on-one, -on -one, teaching them skills on how to keep their people alive long enough to get them to a hospital. I did a lot of pre-hospital combat care training. You know, when I came back from Iraq, I got stationed at Wiesbaden, Germany. Uh, while I was in Germany, I did a lot more training. Um, I worked with military intelligence personnel, so a lot of them had no, I would say a lot of them had no combat experience. So my primary thing was teaching them first aid, teaching them combat lifesaver skills, and I got flown out to England once every quarter to teach as well. After I got out of the military, I came back to the valley. So I'm born and raised here in Los Angeles. I came back to the valley to start working. And unfortunately, nobody took my credentials, nobody took my transcripts or my training. Um, a lot of people wanted a diploma or a certification coming from a California school. You know, one suggestion that I got was go to a private school, challenge their exam, pay the fee and then you can come work at our hospital. And so when I kind of looked into that, they wanted $3,000 just to take a test, or they wanted $10,000 for a program. And in my thinking, why am I gonna spend money on a program or for a certificate on training that I've already received? Instead of pursuing the private school route, I went to community college. I graduated from Birmingham High School, 2006. Right out of high school, I went to community college and in my first semester I got two F's, a B and a C. Like I was not ready to go to school. Uh, after that first semester I ended up joining the military and now here almost seven years later I'm going back to the same community college but this time with a new goal to get into UCLA nursing. I'm here in Los Angeles. It's one of the one of the best schools in the area and UCLA just got named number one public school in the nation. So. Um, that's where I wanted to go. Six and a half years in the military, and now I'm going into community college. So this is how I set up my schedule to figure out what it, what it takes to get into UCLA. Um, so this is one of the first, or this is a few of the first things that I did once I was uh, preparing myself for this transition from being in the military to being an academic, I guess, a full-time academic. Well, I went to go see my the school counselors or the academic counselors that are available on campus. Academic counselors are great, but I did... Uh, I don't want to speak ill of them because they do have a tough job. Um, many, many students go through the counseling, you know, the counseling offices, academics, and all that. But my experience wasn't that great with the academic counselors. Initially, I went in and I told them what my goal was. I wanted to go to UCLA School of Nursing. And the first academic counselor that I saw just about almost laughed at me. Of course, this was, you know, my first meeting with the counselor. She didn't know my background. All she could see in my transcripts was that I had two Fs, a C and a B. After spending some time with my counselor uh, explaining, you know, kind of new goals, new mindset, and time to move forward, 
uh, we set up a student ed plan. One of the biggest things that I can say is create an ed plan and stick to it. To complete all the classes that UCLA requires, just as prerequisites, I already understood that I was gonna spend three years at community college. That was, that was gonna be a given. UCLA requires calculus, requires microbiology, requires organic chemistry. So already given, um, I was gonna spend three years at the community college. Not to mention that I still had to redo some of the classes that I messed up back in 2006. So moving forward, my typical semester, being that this was a community college and they had the semester system, consisted of like two difficult classes and one hard class. And so two, two STEM classes and one you know general ed class. And then I took a lot of the other general eds that I needed to complete in the summer. One of the biggest things that helped me was assist.org. When you're trying to figure out what classes do you need, what level, or how do they translate over to the UC system, assist.org goes through and l breaks down and lists off all the classes that you can take at your community college and this is for california schools i don't know if it happens if it works for out-of-state schools but in california schools they have agreements which which classes translate over to the uc system so with the sys.org i was able to see which classes that i needed to take uh, that fulfilled the minimum requirements for ucla nursing school I will say that one of the biggest challenges that I faced was maintaining a high GPA. From what I understood, and this was going into the process, UCLA required, or UCLA School of Nursing requires you to have a 3.5 GPA going into UCLA um, because they get so many because they get so many requests and they are so small of a school, they only allow 10 transfer students every year and they only do fall starts. So 10 transfer students every year, um, they get so many applications that if you don't hit that minimum of a 3.5 GPA, uh, your application gets truncated. Now, I don't know how true this is. I haven't gone over and talked with the admissions counselor at UCLA yet to figure out if this is true, but this was my understanding going into it. So on my last, no, on my second to last semester at Pierce College, um, I had a 3.49 GPA, 3.49. And I didn't know if they take rounding. Um, so my second to last semester at Pierce College, I took a physics course, a physiology course, and a bio for bio majors course. Now, surprisingly enough, those were all five unit courses, so that was 15 units. That was the first semester that I got straight A's, and that straight A's ended up pushing my GPA to that 5.5 uh, mine was three or the 3.5, 3.56 mark. So it pushed me over that um, that minimum requirement. Now I can't recommend this to anybody. It is completely nerve wracking, especially when you invest everything into um, trying to get into this one program. So that was really everything. Um, but. For my final marks, I got a 3.5 GPA. I had completed all of the courses and many of the recommended courses. So the recommended courses were uh, microbiology, um, communications 101, and I believe psychology. And those three classes, I had knocked them out kind of early and I got an, an okay grade on them, but I don't. <laughs> I don't recommend feeling like you're living right on that borderline of if you're gonna be able to apply or not. On top of having a good GPA, I felt like I was a more well-rounded student. I wasn't really intimidated by my professors. A lot of the times I felt like I was on par with them age-wise. I definitely showed them the respect that they deserved because they had earned those degrees. They had already accomplished what what my goal is. So if you look at UCLA's requirements, it is very science heavy. A lot of bio, a lot of chemistry, a lot of math, uh, anatomy and physiology are all really high required. Like, you know, you have to get those high grades in those classes because that's where they look at on your transcript. 
So I got really involved with my anatomy and physiology department. My anatomy and physiology department had a lab that had three cadavers. Uh, and after completing my first semester anatomy, I volunteered to be a tutor for the incoming class of anatomy students. And then after doing that for a semester, I would, became eligible to be a paid tutor uh, and a paid lab assistant. So I was able to work with the cadavers in preparation for the next, the next rotation of students. And so I did that. I built my relationship with my professor. I volunteered as a student tutor at our Center of Academic Success. So that's our tutoring center. And I you know, tutored for two years. I worked as a lab assistant for our professor. I went in on the summers, uh, worked on the cadavers, prepared the new cadavers for the incoming classes. Ultimately, that led to a letter of recommendation which I used for nursing school. So UCLA requires two letters of recommendation. Uh, one should be professional and one should be academic. So my academic one came from my professor that I worked for as a anatomy and physiology tutor. My second letter of recommendation came from a physician. When I was in the military, I was working under a doc. I maintained contact with him through Facebook. Me and him stayed friends, even outside the military. And uh, when I let him know that I was applying for nursing school, I asked him to be my second recommender. I worked for him for three and a half years. He, you know, we knew each other personally and professionally. So I really trusted that he was going to be really a good person for me to seek out a recommendation from. So that really covered my two recommendation letters. <laughs> Next came the application. <laughs> now the application process was definitely intimidating. UC requires you to write three statements, like three, there are three prompts, well there are like seven prompts, but you have to write essays for three of them. And they all have to be a little bit different. But then on top of that, the School of Nursing requires you to write a personal statement. When the application came around, I wrote out my three essays. I went to the CCCP partnership, the Community College Partnership Program, something. I had them proofread my essays prior to them being submitted. So a big thing was proofread, rewrite, proofread, rewrite, and then have it proofread one more time. The CCCP program, I uh, unfortunately going through the actual community college and never participated in any of those programs. I was never an honors. I was never one of the, uh, you know, academic excellence kind of societies or anything like that, which I kind of regret now because they did at the very end, they did offer me a lot of help, but I was a part of the Student Veterans of America. At our campus, we didn't really have a VRC. So me and a couple of other veterans were really instrumental in setting up our initial VRC that is there now. So in my essays, I wrote how I took leadership roles in every situation I went to, in every new place I went to. I took a leadership role when I was in the military. I took a leadership role when I was teaching these first aid classes. I took a leadership role at the academic level when I you know, volunteered to be an anatomy and physiology tutor, when I... Um, when we fundraised for our VRC so that we can purchase new computers for incoming veterans and assist with the transition from being in the military to coming into an academic space. I wrote about those experiences in those letters or in those essays. And what UCLA really wants is those leadership roles because they don't say that they make leaders. No, you are a leader. They're giving you the tools that you can actually thrive as a leader. So then November comes around and you and the entire application process is done online. So I go online, I get ready to submit this application for UCLA and I find out because I'm a financial aid student that I actually get four vouchers to apply to four different universities. Now this entire time I had focused all my attention on UCLA but I have forgotten that other schools actually have nursing programs as well. So at that time, I kind of scrambled. I really put together some kind of hasty applications. I used all the same material from UCLA, uh, and I actually submitted to UCLA, UC Irvine's nursing program, UC San Diego for their biology program, and UC Davis for their biology program. Because my backup 
was since I've taken all these math, science, STEM courses, I can do my degree in bio and then I can get my PA license from Stanford or from USC. So that became a backup, but really the primary goal was UCLA. So after I submitted those applications, you wait, you know? Um, you get a waiting number or you get something, you know, confirmation number that you've submitted these applications and then you just wait, especially for UCLA because UCLA has a second application process. So even though you submitted the initial application to get into the school, the school of nursing has its own application. So come January, November, December, January. January rolls around and it's time to turn in the supplemental application. Supplemental application is where the statement of purpose comes into play, resume comes into play, two reference letters. Um, UCLA does not require you to take the T's test. UCLA does not require you to have an interview. They do everything through your application and through your statement of purpose. So January rolls around at the last minute. And again, I cannot recommend for anybody to do this, but I was so just knotted up about that statement of purpose that maybe five minutes before the application deadline was when I had it reviewed one more time and given back to me and just submitted it and just let it, <laughs> just let it go. You know, uh, at even one point I contemplated to just withdraw my application, you know, but going from the army, three years at a community college, working with students on a daily basis, at the end, I felt like that's what I really, you know, it, it was truly my goal, it is truly my dream to go to UCLA. And so I submitted the application and again, another wait. You know, you, you turn in that application, you get a confirmation number and it's done. And you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. Now for the actual results, did I get into UCLA? So November turned in the you know, initial application. January turned in the supplemental application. Come February, I'm already receiving acceptance letters. On top of the UC acceptance letter, I got accepted into UC Irvine, but I also got accepted into the Cal State Channel Islands. They had a nursing program, a Cal State nursing program that I had just applied to. Uh, Cal State Long Beach and Cal State LA all sent me, um, all sent me acceptance letters. Irvine was the next one that I was going to wait for because theirs was a true nursing program. Cal State Channel Islands, true nursing program. Uh, I got rejected from UC San Diego and I got waitlisted from UC Davis. Again, those were just on a whim. Those were kind of backups. I didn't really focus my application towards them. So I understand why I got rejected. Or So still no word from UCLA. February, I already received one acceptance letter. March rolls around, I received the other acceptance letter. Here I am in April. You're getting pressured, by getting, I'm getting pressure from other schools to SIR to SIR to, to accept their, to accept their offer. They're like, hey, you know, join our school, financial aid package, this and that, but I'm still hanging on for UCLA. April rolls around, I still haven't got an acceptance letter, I haven't got any word from them. Other schools in UCLA are starting to get their acceptance letters. Freshmen at UCLA are starting to get their acceptance letters. But <laughs> where's where are the transfer students? And then, you know, they come out and then they come out on tweets saying, "Hey, April 25th, 5 p.m., that's when we're going to release the transfer acceptance letters or you know, whatever their letters are. I remember April 25th, 2018. I'm at the Center of Academic Success. I'm just finishing up, you know, my tutoring session and everybody starts to look at their phones. Everybody starts to stare and go logging onto the UCLA website and try to figure it out. I do what everybody else does. I find a corner in the office. I pull out my phone and I slowly just scroll down the website where it says, congratulations, uh, you've been accepted. 
and just in utter disbelief. So, in the mail, just a few weeks later, comes, your future is clearly visible at UCLA. And this is kind of their welcome package. You know, they send you a little book, and in here it says, Dear Future Bruin, congratulations on your admission to UCLA. And so on top of just the general acceptance letter that you get from UCLA, but you also get one from the School of Nursing. So really, that is my adventure. How I went from the Army through community college, and now I've completed my first year at UCLA. So now it's September 2019. I've already completed my first year of nursing school at UCLA, and I'll go into more depth into that in a future video. But, you know, I want to say thank you. Thank you for sticking through the whole video. Um, I really plan and hope to continue to put out content like this, focusing on my adventure from, from the Army, my transition through community college, and being a non-traditional student, now at UCLA, and then, you know, being a future nurse. So thank you. Like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, I really do want to hear more about your guys' journey. Um, thank you.